in this video i'll discuss the first episode of season 8 in detail so stay tuned for that hello everyone welcome to ultimate book maniacs you one stop for book and tv series reviews i post episode reviews top 10 and theory videos so make sure to subscribe this channel and if you want to make sure you never miss a video click the bell icon to turn on notifications anyways let's begin season 8 is finally here the first episode was really good so many reunions and no one died i had a big smile on my face the whole time we had to wait 2 years for this and i think we waited enough so without waiting any longer let's jump right into it this time we have a new intro let's discuss the pictures on the ring surrounding the orb first in my season 6 and 7 q and a video i explained how the ring surrounding the orb depicted the story from aegon's conquest to robert being crowned as king well these pictures also tell a story this time it's the story of the events from this series just like last time the first picture is of a dragon burning down a castle or something i think it might be drogon burning down the house of undying it was the first time they burned someone alive then we see the twin towers of house grey it shows the red wedding on the left side the lion has a fish in its mouth which means the lannisters defeated the tullys and on the right side a man with a dagger is holding a wolf's head which i don't think i need to explain who they are they are ruse and rob or rather rob's head <laughs> and between them hanging from a noose is something which looks like a headless man and a wolf's body to me do you see the same thing i'm seeing who do you think is hanging from the noose then we see a comet on the left one big dragon and three smaller dragons are you thinking what i am thinking we saw how the dragon story started and now we will see how it ends i think this means only one dragon will survive in the end which i believe might be drogon since he has more chance to win a fight and then he will have three baby dragons remember back in season 7 when i made predictions based on the intro that arya will meet hot pie at the end it came true i really hope this intro is correct and dragons will survive when this series ends what do you think this dragon with three baby dragons means do you think it's drogon or dany let me know your thoughts in the comments let's get into the opening title now it begins with the wall which is broken now then moves to the last hearth you can actually see the castle freezing which was a sign that the whites would attack this place then the intro takes us to winterfell and into its crypts where sam reveals the truth to john and i believe a lot more will happen in the crypts then we see two towers and the gate of king's landing and the map room from above before going into the dungeons where the dragon skulls are kept which means someone will go to these dungeons again who do you think it will be and in the end we see the iron throne with the lannister sigil behind which probably won't be there for long if cersei dies unless tyrion ends up on the iron throne so that was the intro of season 8 let's move on to the episode now the episode begins with john and danny arriving at winterfell it reminded me of robert's arrival back in season 1 just like bran climbed the towers to watch robert and his army is march towards winterfell This kid in Winter Town climbs a tree to watch Danny's armies march toward Winterfell. And just like Arya was wandering around back in season 1, one, once again Arya is wandering around instead of standing with her family. Arya looks surprised to see the hound and Gendry riding behind Jon. When everyone gets scared at seeing the dragons for the first time, Arya is the only one who seems happy. Just like I mentioned before in my trailer review video, Arya had told Tywin that she really liked Rhaenys and Visenya. Anyways, it gives me hope that Arya would be the first one to like and accept Danny. Also, 
just like Tyrion was interrupted back in season 1 when he was with a whore aka Ross because Cersei had summoned him. In this season, Bronn was also interrupted by Kyburn because Cersei had summoned Bronn. Anyways, Danny and Sansa's first meeting was cold. While Danny tried to be nice to Sansa, saying she was beautiful just like the North, Sansa didn't even smile back at her. She just said, Winterfell is yours, your grace. The Netherners weren't very happy either. And as we expected, Lyanna Mormont was the one who protested openly. And they all got even madder when they heard the Lannister army will be arriving soon to join them, which they had every right to be, because only a fool would trust Cersei. <laughs> Anyways, remember what I had said in my trailer review videos? John and Danny did fly away on their dragons, but it wasn't to feed them. John riding Rhaegal was so funny. Is it just me? Or was Rhaegal doing those ups and downs on purpose? It felt like he wanted to scare John. But just like Danny, I was also surprised and happy to see that John learned how to turn Rhaegal around and how to bring him to a stop instinctively. And Drogon glaring at John when he was kissing Danny was hilarious. It was like he was warning him, if you hurt her, I'm coming for you. <laughs> By the way, it seems like Davos has the right idea. A proposal is exactly what they need to pacify the northern lords. Long ago, an alliance by marriage was made between a Targaryen and a Martel to unite the seven kingdoms. The same can be done here, and an alliance by marriage might convince the northerners to support them. They don't like bending the knee to Danny alone, but if John and Danny stand together, they might support it. Do you think this marriage can help win the northerners' support? When Jorah brings Danny to meet Sam to thank him for saving Jorah, Sam finds out that Danny executed his father and brother for treason. Sam tells John the truth and says John should be the king, not Danny. I don't get why people are so harsh on Danny. Danny was at war with the Lannisters, and I agree with John. Everyone, whether it's Robert, Ned, Rob, or even John or Sansa. All of them have executed people for treason. After Robert's rebellion, Robert forgave those who bent the knee and executed those who didn't. Rob executed Lord Castark for not following his order. John executed Janus Lint because he refused to go where John told him to go. I don't get why Tyrion and everyone else is talking about Danny like she's the Mad Queen or just evil. She did what any other ruler in her place would have done. Do you agree? What do you think? Moving on to Cersei. Remember what I said before? Cersei is the only one in the Seven Kingdoms who would consider the Night King crossing the wall as a good news. Euron brings the Golden Company to Cersei. He counts the things he has done for her and complains how she still doesn't show him affections. She sleeps with him. Euron says he would put a child in her belly, and she says nothing. I still think she was lying about her pregnancy to manipulate Jaime and Tyrion. And Cersei is drinking wine, but I've heard that pregnant women can't drink wine, right? So I guess this is another proof that Cersei is not pregnant. She sends Bronn to kill her brothers in case they survive the battle in the north. I guess she is not taking any risks with the Valencor prophecy now. <laughs> But Palancor could be anyone, not just Jamie or Tyrion. Also, I don't trust Euron at all. Do you think his deal with Harry Strickland is as simple as it seems? Or do you think he made a secret deal with him? I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Theon finally shows some courage and sneaks in and saves Yara. Yara decides to take back the Iron Islands, so Danny would have a safe place to retreat in case things don't go so well. While Theon wants to go fight with the Starks, Yara tells him to go. Sansa sent Ned Umber back to bring back his people, but as I discussed in my season 7 episode 2 review video and my season 8 prediction videos, the last hearth was the first place that was attacked by the army of the dead. And I still believe that after this, Carhold, Dreadfort and Deepwood Mort might be next. 
but Tormund said the army was between them and Winterfell. That would mean they're heading straight to Winterfell. But I think that was just a guess by Tormund. The Night King wouldn't take any risks. He would want to increase his army as much as he can before attacking Winterfell. By the way, that scene between Tormund and Dolores Ed was hilarious. Stay back, he's got blue eyes. I've always had blue eyes. <laughs> Anyways, the White Walkers have made a spiral out of arms on the wall of Last Hearth and they pinned Ned Umber in the middle of it. They had made the same spiral with the dead horses back in Season 3. I discussed these symbols and their possible meanings in my symbols and their importance videos. Do you think this symbol is some sort of ritual or is the Night King really trying to send a message? Whatever it is, the people who are going to join Jon's army have now joined the Night King's army and the enemy is growing stronger. Let's talk about the reunions now. John and Arya's reunion made me cry. <laughs> it was obvious how much they missed each other. John was happy to see that Arya kept Needle safe. Arya knows that John got stabbed in the heart, which means Bran told them everything. And John was also shocked when Arya defended Sansa because they never got along well when they were kids. Arya's reunion with the Hound and Gendry was amazing too. Am I the only one who thinks that Arya and Gendry were flirting with each other? I loved how Arya looks at Gendry and smiles. Yep, I'm still a Gendry shipper. <laughs> Anyways, Arya asks Gendry to make some kind of dragon glass weapon for her. At first, I thought it was a spear, but on a second look, I think it could be a dagger too. In the picture, the pointed black blade is marked as dragon glass, and the hilt is smaller too. So I think it might be a dagger. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think it's a dagger or a spear? In the trailer, we saw Arya fighting with her spear. And we also saw Jon running with her spear, which I assume he would use to attack Viserion. I wonder if Arya will also do that? What do you think? Sansa and Tyrion's reunion was weird but nice. I agree with Sansa here. I also used to think that Tyrion was the cleverest man alive. But he really is a fool if he thinks he can trust Cersei. I wonder what happened to the clever Tyrion. <laughs> Anyways, the last reunion was Jaime and Bran's reunion. When Jaime arrives, he smiles when he looks around. But that smile vanishes the second he sees Bran. He was so shocked. I was so sad that the episode ended there. I really wanted to see what they would talk about. Judging by the episode 2 trailer, Jamie should be more worried about Danny than Bran. So, that was all for this episode's review. What were your thoughts about this? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. It's time for the comment shout out now. Today's comment shout out goes to Robin Redbreast, who said, You give the most insightful and complete reviews and breakdowns of Game of Thrones. I still love your videos. Congratulations on 11k subscribers. You deserve it and you will get many many more. Thank you so much Robin. I really appreciate that you have loved and supported my channel from the very beginning. Thank you. So, what do you think about these theories? Don't forget to tell us your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, please click on the like button below, share the video and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day. Bye-bye. See you in my next video.